Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today I'd like to show you how easy it is to start quilting with your Cricut Maker and Riley Blake designs. We're going to start cutting out our pieces. So I just wanna take a look at the project sheet to see what we need to keep in mind as we're preparing everything. First of all, if you wanna make a hard copy of the project sheet, you can do so right here just by selecting print. Now let's take a look at the preparation instructions. The first thing that they want you to do is take your white fabric and cut it into 12 inch widths. And they want you to cut it along the width of the fabric. So that means from selvage to selvage or from finished edge to finished edge. Then in point number two here, it says that fabrics five through 10 or one third of a yard cuts. So those pieces right there, number five through 10 are already cut to a 12 inch width for you. And then in point number three here, it tells you that fabrics two, three, and 11 are not going to be cut on the maker. And those pieces represent the inner border, the outer border, and the binding. Then over here where it says cut, this is how they actually want you to set up your mats. So mats one through nine will all be with the white fabric. Then on mats 10 and 11, you're going to put fabric nine. Mat number 12, you're going to put fabric number seven and you'll just follow this guide right here when you're setting up your mats. So let's go and start preparing the mats so that we can start cutting. I did print out the project file and that's right here. And this is the sheet that came in the fabric pack and it has all of the fabric swatches here. And then I also printed out the general instructions for piecing together the quilt. Now in this particular fabric kit, one thing you need to be mindful of is that fabric number four and fabric number 11 are the same fabric, but they've given them to you in two separate cuts. And if you look on here, it tells you that fabric number four is two thirds of a yard and fabric number 11 is three quarters of a yard. So make sure that you identify them when you take them out of the fabric pack and mark them appropriately. When I took the fabrics out of the pack, I marked each one with a label with its fabric number. So this is fabric number three, fabric number two, and so on. Now, according to the project sheet, we're not going to be cutting fabrics three, two, and 11. So I have 11 here. So I'm just going to set those aside. And then the ones that are left here are the ones that we will be cutting on the maker. So we're gonna prepare these to go on the mats. We will be using Cricut's acrylic ruler to cut our fabrics to the proper width. The ruler is exactly 12 inches wide, which is perfect for pre-cutting our fabrics to use on the fabric mats. Now I'm going to cut a 12 inch strip of fabric out of this white fabric here. I have it on the dark side of the mat and I want to cut along the width of the fabric. And what that means is you're going to cut from finished edge to finished edge or from selvage to selvage. These finished edges right here is the selvage. So all I need to do is simply take my ruler, place it right at the edge of the fabric, and then I can cut across with my rotary cutter. And now I have a width of fabric that will fit perfectly onto the Cricut cutting mats. And now on this side, I'll cut out a piece of darker fabric. And again, I'm cutting along the width of the fabric. I'm going to make a 12 inch strip. And on here, you can see what the selvage looks like a little better. So this is the finished edge of the fabric or what they call the selvage edge. And I am just going to cut across the width of the fabric right now. So I simply place the acrylic ruler right on top, right along the edge of the fabric here, and then I can cut straight across with the rotary cutter. I'm going to set up my first mat. So that is going to be using the white fabric. Now, as you know, I cut it to the 12 inch width, but I did not cut the length of it, which I don't intend to cut the length of it. I did iron my fabrics and I'm going to place it down on the mat. Now, 
As far as the mats are concerned, you want to be very careful not to touch the sticky part with your hands because the oils from your hands can affect the stickiness on the mats. I also try and keep my fabrics within this area here. So where this grid line ends, I try not to let my fabrics hang over there if I can help it because that is where the rollers will be going up and down on the maker and you don't want anything there interfering with your rollers. I'm going to let the excess fabric hang off the edge and you want to smooth everything make sure that you get out all the bubbles and then you can take a brayer and just make sure that everything is down nice and flat now I'm putting all my fabrics with the right side up or face up. Personally, I don't think it really matters whether or not the fabric is face up or down. Just be consistent with how you place your fabrics down on the mat. They should either all be face up or all be face down. Now we're ready to send our first mat off to be cut. So I have the project sheet up here and I'm going to click on make it and it brings up all my mats over here in the sidebar. So we'll start with cutting mat one and the only thing that I really want to caution you about is make sure that you have the correct mat in with the correct fabric and you'll refer to your project sheet to set up those mats. So right now we're on mat one that should be white fabric. So I'm going to hit continue and right now it's just looking for my machine now that it has recognized my machine, it wants to know what type of material I'm cutting. So I'm just going to choose cotton. And then it's telling me that I do not need the fabric marker or anything else in my clamp A. And it's also telling me that I need to have the rotary cutter blade installed, which I do. Now, if you forget to put in the proper blade, the maker will double check to make sure that you have in the correct blade. And if you don't, it will pause and it will give you the opportunity to put in the correct blade. Now we can load the mat. Make sure that the mat is pressing up against the two black rollers and underneath the two white guides on each side of the maker. And then once you have your mat set in place, press the load unload button. And then when you're prompted, press the Cricut button to go. Then when your cut is done, you can unload your mat. After you unload the first mat, you'll be brought to a screen that's going to prompt you to load up your second mat. Always make sure that the mat that you're putting in has the correct fabric on it. This is mat one, it's done cutting, and to remove the pieces, I can just take the excess fabric here and just start pulling back on it. If I don't have um, any excess material hanging off the edge, then I recommend using something like a pair of tweezers you can just grab and start pulling. And again, make sure that you don't touch the mat with your fingers. So just finish peeling everything back and then you can use the tweezers to pull the pieces off. Don't use any of your spatula tools on this. Once you've pulled off all your pieces, you may have some threads. I just use my little tweezers here to start to pull them off and it can be a little tedious pulling them off. You can leave the threads on, your rotary cutter will cut through them, but what I find is if I don't take them off, eventually the fabric won't stick because there are too many threads down there. So I try and get off as many as I can. When it comes time to wash the mats, I will just fill up my sink with a little bit of warm water, just a drop or two of liquid soap, and a little bit of vinegar and the threads will come right off. You let the mat dry and it becomes sticky again. My cutting is done. I've taken all the pieces off the mat and I've sorted them. The only ones that are not here are the white ones because they didn't fit on the mat, but trust me there are a lot of pieces here and I didn't have to cut out any of them. I did change around my blocks a little bit as far as the fabrics go, so my quilt is not going to look exactly like the one in the picture. My color arrangement will be a little bit different. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and join me over on my Facebook page which is Cricut Everyday Maker.